खबर शामिल करते हैं इस्लामाबाद से दहशत गर्दी के खिलाफ अमरीकी जंग ने ही दहशत गर्दों को जन्म दिया वजीर अजम इमरान खान ने कहा है कि क्या इस वक्त अफगानिस्तान में तालिबान के सिवा कोई ऑप्शन है जल्द या बदेर इन्हें तस्लीम करना ही पड़ेगा पड़ोसी मुल्क में बदतरीन इंसानी बहरान जन्म ले रहा है हर कोई अफगान अवाम से मुतल तशवीश में मुबतला है दहशत गर्दी के खिलाफ अमरीकी जंग ने ही दहशत गर्दों को जन्म दिया और बतौर इतिहादी वॉशिंगटन की पॉलिसियों का खमियाजा हमें भुगतना पड़ा है वजीर आजम इमरान खान ने सी एन एन को इंटरव्यू देते हुए कहा की पाकिस्तान तालिबान बलोच दहशत गर्द तंजीमे और दाश पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ कार्रवाई में मुलवस है कभी न कभी अफगानिस्तान में तालिबान की हकूमत को तस्लीम करना पड़ेगा अफगानिस्तान पर मुआशी दबाव डालने ऐसी तालिबान नहीं बल्कि अफगान आवाम को ही नुकसान होगा Pakistan is of course bearing the brunt of it the UN estimates you have already taken in almost 2 million refugees um what how bad are things on the ground and what could happen uh, in the next weeks or months if there isn't a, a change in the situation well for you know people in the US must understand one thing disliking Taliban government is one thing it's a question of uh, 40 million almost 40 million of ones half of them uh, are in a very precarious situation so there's hunger there's uh, one of the afghan winters is is extremely wicked ruthless and so they're facing winter the the food shortages malnutrition uh, the next uh, couple of months everyone is worried that they could be one of the worst or already developing into one of the worst humanitarian crisis have you found it e- possible easy to deal with the taliban is the you know because what the us concern is that the taliban is not giving guarantees on women's rights and things like that what is your experience and what is your advice to the us well look for you what are the choices is there a, an alternative to taliban right now no there isn't is there a chance that uh, if if there's if the taliban are squeezed if the government is squeezed there could be a change for the better no so the only alternative we have right now is to work with them and incentivize them in 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 what the world wants inclusive government human rights women rights in particular that's the only way forward right now and the 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 flip side is if they are abandoned or these sanctions stay there and the banking system uh, has no liquidity left because of the sanctions then the worry is that afghanistan could go into chaos a humanitarian crisis chaos and then from pakistan's point of view we face two problems we already have 3 million afghan refugees there t- there were three uh, terrorist groups operating from afghanistan into pakistan uh, they were right now with the taliban government uh, unfortunately when the when, when the flood of refugees came we have almost 250000 uh, afghans crossing into pakistan now amongst them unfortunately have these terrorists there's the pakistani taliban which is which has conducted attacks inside pakistan there's the baloch uh, insurgents who been uh, uh, conducting attacks and especially recently and then there's isil so our, our best hope is that a stable afghanistan will ensure uh, stability or peace in pakistan but it's not just pakistan because if it goes into chaos then we know why the the U- united states first came to afghanistan uh, 20 years back so therefore it's in everyone's interest that this does not descend into chaos the situation in afghanistan would you argue that the united states should recognize the taliban government well sooner or later uh, the taliban would have to be recognized now uh, the question is the world wants some guarantees before they recognize the taliban so how far uh, 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 is the us going to push the taliban to actually conform to what they expect them uh, in terms of human rights now this is the question 
can, will the Taliban go all the way? Are they capable of going all the way? Bearing in mind that this is a very strong ideological movement. Uh, they represent a culture which uh, is completely alien to the Western societies. So therefore, uh, somewhere it, it, there has to be give and take. But not recognizing them and freezing their accounts and uh, 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 the banking system, uh, the only people who are going to suffer is not the Taliban government because no one can replace them right now. But what will happen is that they, half the population of Afghanistan, which is about 20 million people, are at a severe risk. You were a very eloquent critic of um, U.S. policy in the broader Middle East, Af Afghanistan, Pakistan, with regard to the military actions. You would always argue that those actions, the drone attacks and such, fed uh, the forces that, that produced terrorism. Um, now, what I'm what I'm struck by is you have ISIS or ISIL uh, attacking in Iraq, attacking in Syria, attacking in Pakistan, as you say, in Afghanistan. The, the, the U.S. is out. What is fueling the terrorism we are still seeing in the broader M Middle East? Is it all Sunni versus Shia? Is it what what are the roots of this terrorism now? Well, the U.S. war on terror actually bred terrorists. I can tell you from the Pakistan's uh, example, because Pakistan, by joining the U.S., we had 80,000 people dying in this, uh, uh, joining the U.S. war on terror. And we saw the war, as it went along, it produced more terrorists. And I, I'm convinced it's exactly the same what happened in Afghanistan. Because these night raids in Afghanistan, the drone attacks, drone attacks, really the United States must review this policy. We watched what happened here. They were telling uh, people in the U.S. that the drones were very accurate and the people, they actually got the terrorists. Bombs exploding in villages. You know, how, how would they only get the terrorists? So there was a lot of collateral damage and I'm afraid uh, people in the U.S. did not really, the public that does, didn't know the amount of collateral damage. We bore the brunt. Because what happened was we were considered collaborators of the U.S. So the, all the, the, uh, the revenge attacks were against the Pakistani soldiers, against the people of Pakistan. There were suicide attacks uh, all going all over the country. We lost 80,000 people. But the U.S. has withdrawn and the terror continues. Uh, much less. Uh, free the, you can't compare now. I mean, during the height of this uh, war on terror, we were, Islamabad was a fortress. I mean, you had suicide attacks going everywhere. So, um, they, compared to what used to happen now, you know, terrorism is, uh, is almost insignificant now. In what they term a cultural genocide against Muslims in Xinjiang. Do you see it differently? Uh, for, firstly, we had our ambassador, uh, Abin al Haq. He went to uh, uh, Xinjiang and he, according to his observations, the picture is not what was uh, being portrayed uh, on the Western media. But more importantly, from our point of view in Pakistan, Kashmir is a disputed territory between Pakistan and India. Uh, over the last 35 years, approximately the figure varies about a hundred thousand Kashmiris have died since 5th August uh, two, uh, 2019 uh, the, uh, the Indians have revoked the status of Kashmir uh, which unilaterally which is according to the United Nations Security Council a disputed territory between Pakistan and India there are extrajudicial killings going on there are no rights there there's clamp down there there are 800,000 Indian troops in, in the Kashmir Valley. Now, I find it very difficult that there is hardly any indigna indignation about what is happening in Kashmir compared to what is happening or what they say is happening in Xinjiang. So that, that's where I disagree with this. We as Pakistanis feel very strongly that this should be even-handed. Yes, if, if Firstly, uh, Kashmir is different because it's disputed between Pakistan and India, confirmed by the U United Se uh, uh, Nations Security Council resolution. So for the, us, this is the immediate issue right now. 
And I'm afraid uh, it do just doesn't get the attention it deserves. Are you saying that the treatment of Muslims in Kashmir is worse than the treatment of Muslims in Xinjiang? Uh, there would be absolutely no comparison. And I, have, I only have one source, and this is our ambassador in China, who's compared the two. There is no comparison there. I mean, in Kashmir, what is happening is, is criminal. But whatever is happening in Kashmir, do you condemn what is happening in China to, to Muslims there? If, 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 what, if I believe the, uh, the Western media, uh, unfortunately, um, right now, you know, Farid, we are sadly, and I hope it doesn't happen, we are heading towards another Cold War. And we all know once, you know, you, these sides are taken, then, the, you know, you, you, do you believe the, which side do you believe? Because two sides are completely different. What China is saying is completely different to what the U.S. is saying or, or the Western media is saying. So who do you believe? That's why we asked our ambassador to give us uh, his opinion. And it's not, you know, what is uh, appearing in the Western media. But my point is that right now, uh, what should not happen is that we should not be heading towards another Cold War. And because then there's a lot of propaganda involved and you don't know what the truth is.